Hello and welcome to this week's Hands-On Training with MindsDB. My name is Ian. I work on the customer team here at MindsDB based over in the northeast of England. So I'm joined by my colleague Martina, who will be uh, your guide today. Uh, she's an engineer based out in Germany. So now you know a little bit about us, it would be fantastic if you would be able to share a little bit about you, where you're from, what you're working on, what your interest is in AIML, and maybe any use cases that you have in mind for the technology. So there is a chat tab in the bottom right, which is where you can share this kind of information, um, which, uh, yeah, we'd love to hear. There is also a questions tab, which is next to the chat tab in the bottom right. Any questions that you have about uh, anything you see in the presentation, about MindsDB generally, or about AIML, please do pop any questions in the questions tab and we'll make sure to answer them at the end of the session. We'll dedicate some time for Q&A. So with that said, I shall hand over to Martina to get us started. Over to you, Martina. Thank you, Ian. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to this training session with MindsDB. Today's agenda, uh, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, you should be able to see the slides. So today's agenda includes an introduction to MindsDB, where we'll go over what is MindsDB, how to use it, some examples. And then we'll move on to live demo that will include two demos. Uh, one is about predicting sentiment of customer reviews using the OpenAI's GPT-4 model with MindsDB. And the second demo is about uh, getting the real-time forecasts and sending them as Slack notif notification that is, will automate the whole AI workflow from fetching the data up to processing it with the model, up to sending the Slack notifications. And uh, to automate this entire work workflow, we'll use MindsDB's custom jobs feature. And we'll finish with a Q&A session. So let's start with what is MindsDB? MindsDB is an AI automation platform that facilitates building AI-powered applications uh, fast and easily. It works by connecting any source of data with any AI framework, as you can see on the image. So with MindsDB, you can easily connect any data source, virtually any data source that includes databases, data warehouses, applications, for example, Postgres or Gmail, Twitter. From these data sources, you can fetch data and follow the error arrow uh, and provide data to your AI model created based on one of the AI frameworks available at MindsDB that includes OpenAI, Hugging Face, Nixla for time series and more. So once you pass, connect your data, then you can pass data to AI model and then take the predictions and forecasts and plug it back to another data source, for example, and fully automate this workflow using the jobs feature. Okay, let's talk about the benefits of MindsDB. So, uh, MindsDB integrates directly with different data sources that include relational and non-relational databases, data warehouses, and applications. And doing so, uh, we eliminate the need for building and maintaining uh, data pipelines or separate systems for AI deployment. Furthermore, uh, MindsDB offers uh, automated AI workflows so you can automate entire AI workflows to execute it based uh, on time-based or event-based triggers. And uh, you can do that using a custom SQL comment that is create a job. So it does not require any custom automation logic, just execution of a single 
SQL statement that will be shown later on during demo. Um, furthermore, MindsDB can turn uh, almost every developer into an AI engineer. And that is uh, thanks to uh, the fact that we leverage SQL uh, using the existing SQL skills. Developers can create and deploy AI models easily. Uh, on top of that, we offer enhanced scalability and performance. So you can use uh, MindsDB for production system. We offer uh, special plans for production system to scale according to uh, the demands of the client's use cases. Now we'll show you a simple example that will be included in the live demo later on. Uh, the example is about enriching your, your data using large language models. So here, uh, we've got input data that has product names and uh, customer reviews of some Amazon products. And what we are going to do is we will enrich this data by adding a third column that will store sentiment for each of the reviews. And to do that, we are going to create uh, an AI table, a generative AI table, as we call it within MindsDB, which is basically a model. To create a model or an AI table, we use the custom SQL statement, create model. Here we give it a name as sentiment classifier, and we are going to predict sentiment here, sentiment is the column that will store prediction results and will be joined later on with the input data table. So it's worth mentioning that large language models are pre-trained models. So we can create an AI table without the need to train it. But uh, if it was any other model, you can add the from clause and define uh, the select statement to define the training data. So the model will be created, then trained using the provided data and automatically deployed. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, let's keep moving. Then in the using statement, we define parameters that are uh, specific for the AI framework. Here, we are using the OpenAI framework so we define engine as OpenAI, and it requires prompt template as one of the parameters. Prompt template is a message to the model. The model is going to complete this message. So here we say to the model, describe the sentiment of the reviews strictly as positive, neutral, or negative. It's a good practice to give some examples so that the model knows that this type of review is positive, and this kind of review is negative. Then we provide a variable within double curly braces. Review is a variable name that will be taken from our input data table. So the name of the variable review must match the name of the column in the input data table. So now that we have our input data and our AI table, we are going to join the two to enrich our table, our input table with the third column. So this is how we do it. We are selecting from Amazon reviews, which is our input data and joining it with the model. This is a custom join, join statement that does not require the on close as it is defined uh, implicitly. So we are uh, joining the table with the model. The product name and review comes from our input data table. Then the review value is fed to our sentiment classifier model, which then processes for each review value, it uh, processes it according to the provided prompt template and gives us back the sentiment value 
that is selected from the model. So upon running this query, this is what we get. The product names, review, and the sentiment column that defines the sentiment for each review. So that's how easy it is to uh, create, a create and deploy a model and query for predictions with MindsDB. Let's move on to MindsDB's architecture. So MindsDB connects to uh, data sources or data layer. You can connect to applications, databases, vector stores, data streams, and more. Currently, we've got over 100 data integrations. So I'm sure you will find the data um, source of your interest to connect to MindsDB. Once you connect, MindsDB has access to your data to be used uh, to use it for training the model or for making predictions. Then uh, we've got AI engines. Uh, MindsDB provides over 20 AI engines, and that includes OpenAI, Hugging Face, and a few AutoML engines. You can also upload your own model, the so-called BYOM, or bring your own model, and use all the features available in MindsDB with your own custom model. So you use the AI engines to create model. Then you use one of the connected data sources to train the model if required, and then to make predictions. Once you have predictions or forecasts for time series, you can uh, feed them to your applications or other developer tools using either SQL syntax or MongoQL or REST APIs. More on that later on. So let's talk about how to deploy MindsDB. There are three ways you can deploy MindsDB uh, to uh, use it. One of them is self-hosted, which is uh, which means that you can install and deploy MindsDB locally via pip or Docker. The instructions on how to do that can be found in our documentation. When you go to docsmindsdb.com, under the setup section, you will find self-hosted. Another way is to use the MindsDB Cloud Editor. It does not require any installation. Uh, you need to create an account at cloudmindsdb.com, and you can use all the features of our MindsDB Cloud Editor. And then uh, we've got MindsDB Starter, which is a paid plan that includes managed instances for greater security and scalability. To learn more about all these options, of deploying MindsDB, you can go to mindsdb.com slash pricing and find out all features that are included in each of the options. Here, open source is the self-hosted version, demo is our MindsDB cloud, and the paid version, MindsDB starter. How to connect to MindsDB? So one way is to simply use our cloud editor. And then you can also connect MindsDB and interact with MindsDB using other ways. That includes SQL clients. You can uh, connect MindsDB to third-party database clients, such as Dbeaver, MySQL. Uh, or you can connect it even to Tableau or SQL Alchemy. You can find detailed instructions on how to connect under AI workflow getting started section for each of the environments that we offer. And then there are also Mongo clients. You can connect MindsDB to Mongo Compass or Mongo Shell and interact with all the MindsDB objects from your Mongo database. And for that, we provide a Mongo syntax that can be found also in our documentation. Then we offer as well the REST API endpoints. So you can interact with all the objects using the REST API endpoints 
from directly from your applications. Or you can opt for using one of our SDKs, either on JavaScript or Python SDK to interact with MindsDB directly from your JavaScript or Python code. Okay, let's talk about the data sources. So as it was mentioned before, MindsDB offers numerous uh, data sources that include databases, applications, data warehouses, data streams, and more. You can connect uh, databases, including MySQL, Postgres, Mongo, or some of the less known databases as well, to, and um, also applications such as Twitter, Gmail, or Slack. So you can connect all these data sources and then use them to create your own custom AI workflow to, for example, fetch data that you store in your Postgres database, process it with one of the models within MindsDB, and feed the results, for example, as Slack notifications or send results uh, to your Gmail in the form of emails or in the form of tweets. You can find more on how to connect different data sources to MindsDB in the integrations tab under data sources. Now let's talk about AI engines. There are a few groups of AI engines we offer. One of them is large language models that are used to solve common language problems. Currently, uh, we offer Hugging Face, OpenAI, Langchain, also Llama Index, and MonkeyLearn. You will find more in our documentation. Then bring your own models. So there are different ways you can bring your own models to MindsDB. One of them is Rayserve or MLflow, or you can use MindsDB's custom feature to upload your custom model uh, by providing the Python code and the requirements text file, uploading it to MindsDB and uh, using it from there. And please note that these uh, custom options require the paid plan, the MindsDB starter, to be able to use it. Then we've got automated machine learning models, that is Lightwood, Ludwig, and more, uh, and spe special models for time series that includes uh, a few of Nixlas models and Merlion. Please know that Lightwood is our uh, default uh, AI engine, and this can be also used for time series model, as you can find in uh, the tutorials available in our documentation. So to find more, it's also under Integrations tab under AI Engines. You can find all the available AI Engines. So let's talk about one of the <clears throat> important features that MindsDB offers, that is automating AI workflows. So <clears throat> you can mix and match between data sources and AI frameworks to create your custom AI workflows. For example, you can use your Gmail account as your data source. You can fetch your emails, for example, every one hour, then feed this emails data to an AI model that will summarize the content of the emails you receive. And then you could feed these predictions, which is these summarized emails, for example, as Slack notifications. And you can th think of many other use cases to uh, automate with MindsDB. And uh, this also enables you to keep improving the efficiency and performance of your models. For uh, most of the cases, uh, you have dynamic data that is updated uh, hourly or daily or weekly and you want your model to account for the new data. So you can uh, create a job that will retrain or fine tune your model regularly uh, using the new data 
to improve its uh, accuracy, efficiency, and performance. And it's easy uh, with MindsDB to schedule jobs and get real-time predictions straight to your inbox or as notifications, or you, can, you may uh, opt for creating an alert system that's easy to do with the jobs feature. Let's move on to the live demos. So we'll start with an easier example <clears throat> where we are going to analyze the sentiment of customer uh, reviews for some of the Amazon products. So this is the MindsDB Cloud Editor. Let's go over the components before jumping into the first demo. On the right-hand side, we've got Learning Hub that contains different tutorials and examples. You can open any of them and just copy-paste the code and execute it in the editor to try it out yourself. So that's a uh, quick start. Uh, it, it enables you to start quickly with using MindCB. On the left-hand side, we've got <clears throat> a uh, tree of objects. So MindsDB is our default project that stores all the models, views, and jobs, as you can see here. Then a files database stores all the files uploaded to MindsDB. There is an option to upload a file. So all the uploaded files are stored in the, stored in the default files database. Then if you connected, for example, MySQL database, it is going to be uh, stored under MySQL DB item. Then if you connected your Slack account, it is going to be stored under Slack and so on. <clears throat> okay, so let's start with the first demo. Uh, first, we need to connect our data source. Here, we use the sample MySQL uh, database. So, and we use the create database statement, provide a name, provide an engine as MySQL, and each data source has uh, custom connection parameters. Here, to connect MySQL DB, we need user, password, host port, and database. So by executing this query, we can connect our uh, database here, I have already connected it, as you can see. So I got that it already exists. So let's select data from our input data table called Amazon Reviews. So we've got product names and reviews. So once we have our input data ready, connected, and the table is ready to use, then we can move on to creating a model. So again, we use the create model statement. We give it a name as sentiment classifier. We are going to predict the sentiment. So the sentiment column is going to store the prediction made by the model. Then in the using clause, we define all the parameters. Here we use engine as OpenAI. We define model name as the latest GPT-4. And the prompt template, which is similar message, says to describe sentiment of the reviews as positive, neutral, or negative, um, giving some examples. And finally, the variable stored in double curly braces called review as the one of the columns in the input data table. So the review value is going to be, is going to replace this variable and the model will complete the prompt template by providing the sentiment for each review value from our input data table. So this is how we create a model. It's already created, so we can describe this model to check its status. The status is complete. Everything is up to date, so we can go ahead and use it. One way is to make a single prediction. Here, we query the model directly. We are going to select the review column whose value is provided in the where clause. 
this review is going to be fed to our model, which then processes it according to the prompt template and gives us the sentiment value. So let's check the sentiment for the, this review value. Okay. And we can move on to batch predictions. Here, as it was shown before, we are going to join our input data table, Amazon reviews, with our model sentiment classifier. The review value comes from our input data table, which is fed to the model, which then processes it according to the prompt template message and gives us the output, uh, as the sentiment as output. So the sentiment is selected from the model review value from the input data table. Let's run it for the first three rows of the Amazon reviews table. So we've got first three reviews and each is assigned a sentiment as predicted by the model. So now that we have our predictions, uh, the next thing we would like to do is to save predictions. So one way we can save them into a view. We use the create view statement, we give it a name, and within parentheses, we place the same select query that was used to fetch predictions. So by running this query, we create a view that is stored by default in the MindsDB projects, as we have it review sentiment here. So now we can query this view. <clears throat> okay, so we have product name, review, and sentiment for the first 10 rows as defined by the limit 10. As in the similar way, we can save predictions into a database table. We use the create table statement here. I have connected my local Postgres database with the user that has write access. And in the demo schema of my Postgres database, I'm going to save it as review sentiment GPT-4 and within parentheses, as before, I place the query used to fetch the predictions. So after running this statement, a table is created in my local database that, <clears throat> that you can see here. And now I can query this table from my local database. Okay, let's give it some time. Uh, once it is there, oh, just a moment. Seems the connection was lost to my local database. Okay, let me try that now. Okay, here we go. So we've got product name, review, and sentiment value for the first 10 rows from our Amazon reviews table. Now that we have our uh, sentiment values saved in the database, we can uh, further analyze it for each product. We can count how many positive, neutral, and negative reviews are there. And, and to do that, we use the uh, custom Postgres syntax that uses sum and case when statements so to execute native queries, as we call them, that's the syntax. We need to select star from our Postgres uh, or any other database. And within parentheses, we place the native query. So what happens here, this query is going to be executed directly in the database defined here. So let's run it. Okay, so we've got four products in the first 10 rows that were saved in the database. We've got four products and there is count of each type of review for each product. Okay, so that is all for the first demo. Now let's move on to automating AI workflows with jobs. So here we are going to get real-time forecasts uh, of the one of the 
trading pairs uh, that is uh, from uh, Binance and uh, we are going to send Slack notifications with the forecast for the next 10 minutes. So what we do here, what the AI workflow is going to do, we fetch trading data from Binance API that is integrated to MindsDB. Then we use this Binance data to train a time series model and to make forecasts for the price of one of the trading pairs for the next 10 minutes. Once we have the forecasts, we send them as Slack notifications. So let's start going step by step. So first thing first, we connect Binance. This does not require any connection parameters. So you just need to run this statement to connect to Binance. I have already created it, as you can see on the left hand side here. So then we are going to focus on the BTC USDT trading pair to make forecast for the open price. Let's select data from Binance. And you can see the open time here comes in the epoch format that is not easily readable. What is the exact date? But it comes uh, for, uh, it is um, data from the past couple of hours and then open price value for each timestamp. So data from Binance uh, is uh, every, uh, the interval between rows is one minute. So the data is updated every one minute, which is dynam dynamic data. So we are going to predict the open price value for the following 10 minutes. So to do that, we are going to create model. We call it cryptocurrency forecast model. We use the data from Binance to train to train the model. Then we are going to predict the open price, which is name of the column in our training data. We are going to order by open time, which is also one of the columns available in the training data. Window 100 means that the model is going to look back at sets of 100 rows, so or 100 minutes, because each row is uh, separated by one minute. So the model looks back at the sets of uh, past sets of 100 minutes and horizon 10 means it is going to make forecasts for the next 10 rows or for the next 10 minutes. So this statement is going to create a model, train it with the Binance data and deploy it within MindsDB. Let's run the describe statement to check the status. So status is complete. We can go ahead and use this model. So before making prediction, we are focusing on one trading pair. That's the reason why we should save this data into a view that is going to always store the latest data from Binance. So we create a view that will store Binance data and we can then query it and uh, here we have the latest data with the latest up to a minute updates from Binance. Now we'll make batch predictions by joining this view, which is our input data table with the model that was created, trained and deployed right before. Here we are using the two timestamp and we are casting the open time to uh, timestamp uh, uh, type so that it is easily readable by us what is the exact date and time for the specific open price. So we select open time, casting it to uh, human re readable date time. Then we select open price and the open price underscore explain column is the stores the explanation for the predictions made by the model. So this is what we select. Then here we join input data table with the model. And here 
we define that we want to predict for the open time that is greater than the latest data points stored in our data. So if the last data point is for 20th September at 1936, we want to start making forecasts starting from 1937. So that's what the latest keyword uh, is for. So let's make these predictions. Okay, so uh, yes, so here it is actually GMT time zone, which is two hours back. So we've got 1737, not 1937. But uh, here you have it for the next, ten, the prediction is for the next 10 minutes. So the open time, open price value, which is the value predicted by the model. And here is the explanation that includes the confidence, anomaly, a lower bound, up, upper bound, etc. So now we've got the predictions, trading data predictions for the next 10 minutes for the BTC USDT trading pair. So now what we want to do is to send these predictions as Slack notifications. So to do, to do that, we need to connect our Slack. So Slack is one of the data sources, as you can also fetch data from Slack. You can upload data to Slack. So we connect Slack to MySDB using also the create database statement, give the name to the connection, define engine as Slack, and provide all the parameters. Here, we need the bot token to connect to our Slack. So the detailed instructions on how to set up your Slack app and get the bot token can be found under applications, Slack. So I won't go into detail of how to get this bot token. It's not difficult. You can follow our docs to do that. So upon executing this comment, we connect to our Slack. I have already uh, done that. So it is under Slack DB. I've got my connection. So now that I connected my Slack, we can okay let's let me copy this part we can try to test the slack connection by inserting something <clears throat> so here i created the slack app and added it to a slack channel that i created binance forecast when you go to view channel details integrations here you have all the apps that you can add so i added the binance forecast app here where we are going to provide the forecast. So to test the connection, we can run the insert into statement that takes channel and text of the message. So here we are inserting into Binance forecast channel, and this is the message we are going to insert. So let's try it. Okay. So now you see that we've got this message sent by our Binance forecast app. Okay, so that works. Now we can go ahead and automate this whole AI workflow using jobs. So we create a job, we'll call it BTC USDT forecast to Slack. Let's call it number four. Within parentheses, we define all the queries that the job is going to run. We'll dive into detail of what the job does. But before that, let's uh, talk about scheduling a job. So we can schedule a job by defining a start date time. Please know that this start and end date times are in the GMT format. So when you define it, you need to consider that this is for GMT time zone. So we can define the start date, or you can define the end date, or you can just define that you want the job to run, for example, every five minutes as we do here. So that's the scheduling part. And this is the part of what the job is going to do. So let's go over it. So in, in the step one, we are going to retrain the model. As I mentioned before, the data provided by Binance is a dynamic data. So 
what do we do here? We are retraining our, our model using the latest data from Binance. So here, using the data up to 1940, up to one minute ago. Then the joiner process parameter ensures that the model is completes the retraining process, which may be time consuming at times. And only after the model is retrained with the new latest data, only then we insert the predictions to our Slack. So first we insert the message, similarly as we did before, we insert the message here at the forecast for the next 10 minutes. Another insert into statements, insert the predictions. So here we select the channel, which is a static value. So we just define it here uh, as Binance forecast. And then for text of the message, we concatenate all the components using the concat function. So first timestamp, we take the open time value and cast it to a timestamp and the open price prediction for this timestamp, which is the open price column. And again, here we take the, uh, our input data table from Binance, join it with the model, define uh, the latest data point, and that's how the predictions are inserted into Slack. So now it's time to run this job. So let's select the entire create job statement, the queries it executes, and the scheduling part, and run it. Okay, so the query is executed successfully. As I mentioned, the retraining process is time consuming, so it may take some time to uh, complete and then insert into Slack. So let's talk over uh, how you can monitor it. So you can select from the default jobs table, providing name of your job. And here is our job that started at 17.42, which is GMT time zone. Next run is at 17.42. So the first run of the job is ongoing right now. Then if for any reason your job doesn't do uh, as expected, for example, doesn't provide input to Slack, the jobs history table is the place where you can check for errors. So when we query it now, we see that the job started but it didn't finish yet. So we should wait for that. Let's try to query it again. Okay, so the job completed. It took about a minute to retrain the model and insert predictions to Slack. So now we can go to our Slack channel and see that the predictions were inserted just now for the next 10 minutes as it is 5.17.43 starting from 1744, the predictions are for the next 10 minutes. Finally, you can, if you here, we actually did not define the end date. So if you wanna disable the job, you have to use the drop job comment to finish it. So that's how easy it is to create AI workflows with MindsDB. You can mix and match different uh, data integrations or AI uh, engines to create your custom AI workflow and automate it with the jobs feature. Now, before I finish, let's talk about available resources that include the MindsDB documentation where you can find all the instructions and troubleshooting guides how to use uh, MindsDB. So we've got documentation that includes some overview and the uh, introduction then many use cases, that's a good place to start to see what you can do with MindsDB setup, and then the entire AI workflow step-by-step -step for different environments that we offer. Then in the integrations, contribute and FAQs, you can uh, have a look. Then we've got MindsDB Slack community, which is a place to uh, where you can interact with the core MindsDB team and uh, ask questions and share your feedback. So we encourage you to join our Slack community, which you can do either from our documentation page, clicking on join our Slack, or from the MindsDB page, clicking on join our Slack. 
Finally, we've got the GitHub repository as MindsDB is an open source project. We store our code base at GitHub. So you can view it by going to github.com slash mindsdb slash mindsdb. And this is the place where you can contribute by either solving one of the issues labeled as help wanted or by creating a new issue, for example, to report a bug or request a new feature. That is all from me. Thank you very much. Back to you, Ian. Thank you very much, Martina. Um, and thank you everybody for your attention. If you have any questions, please do pop them in the questions tab as we're now about to start the Q&A part of the session. So we have a couple of questions to kick us off. Um, so Alec has asked, is it possible to backtest the model with the example? You were showing an example before Martina. Um, is it possible to backtest a model? Um, I am not sure what you mean by backtesting, but when you create a model and when you provide the training data set in the front loss, what it does under the hood, it takes this training data set and divides it into training and validation data sets. And uh, so, and that, that's how you can also find out the accuracy of the model because MindsDB uh, does it for you to uh, train the model and to also validate it. Thank you, Martina. Uh, Alec, if there's anything you'd like to follow up on there, dive into a little bit deeper, please do feel free to ask a follow-up question in the questions tab. Um, so Henrik has asked a question about, is there a Google Drive integration? And what would be a good way to get lots of files from Google Drive? So I don't, but I'm, actually, I'm not sure, Martina, do you happen to know if there's a, a Google Drive integration? Uh, I haven't seen any, but uh, if it is something you would like to use, for example, for your use case or production system, we can definitely uh, look into that to implement it. But as for uploading files, currently the way we offer it is uh, from directly from MindsDB, but that would require uploading uh, files one by one to MindsDB. And then it is stored in the default files database, which I mentioned and you can use it from there. But as for Google Drive, we currently do not have integration, but you can, uh, for example, join our Slack and share your use case there. Maybe we'll be able to help you out better. Yeah, we, we so we definitely do have other elements of Google Workspace. So we do yeah. have uh, a Gmail integration. We do have a Google Calendar integration. There's an outside chance there's a Google Drive integration lurking. Um, you're able to upload uh, files to S3, for example, and you can um, you can uh, use them from there. So in principle, Google Drive isn't a ginormous leap. Um, what I'm also going to do um, is I'm just going to pop a link um, to our GitHub issues. If you'd like to create an issue for creating um, a Google Drive integration, first of all, we're open source. You might be able to do it. It's actually reasonably simple to create an integration. Um, we have a community who might want to take the issue up on your behalf. Um, and as Martina said, if this is an actual use case for your business, um, MindsDB itself, the organization, might be able to build it out for you. So happy to have that conversation um, if that's something that you want to do. Yeah, um, I, I, I'll add one more thing because we've got also Google Sheets integration. So if you store your data in Google Drive in the uh, Excel sheet form, you can directly connect to Excel sheet and this is available also in our docs under data sources, how to connect uh, Google Sheets from MindsDB. Thank you, Martina. Sure. Um, please do keep the questions coming if you have them. I can't see any more, so I will give everyone a few seconds to type away if there is uh, any further questions um, before we wrap up. So I can see that Edward is typing something um, in the chat. Please do pop your questions in the questions tab if you have them. Um, and we'll make sure we can put them on the screen for everyone to read. So there doesn't appear to be... Um, so Edward has asked a question on the pricing. Um, is it possible to deploy MindsDB um, on a local GPU? So the answer is yes. Um, so first of all, MindsDB is an open source project. Um, so 
Um, it, the MindDB itself is available to download. Um, you can download the Docker image, um, install it with pip or whatever you want to uh, install it with. So yes, it's absolutely possible there. Um, if you, MindDB as an organization does have support and services that can go alongside such a deployment, but you're welcome to just take um, the uh, Docker image and have at it. You never need to talk to us or pay us a penny if that's what you want to do. Um, there are advantages to using MindDB Cloud if that's something you would be interested in so you don't have to mess about with the setup and the management um, and have access to very powerful GPUs, um, but of course, entirely up to you. Um, I can see Edward following up. He just said thank you. So thank you, Edward. Um, Olivia is asking, once someone builds a model of a chatbot using MindDB, can one eventually license and protect it as part of their organization? So yes, Olivia, you can. Um, so anything that you create within MindsDB um, is private to you, uh, unless you're actually contributing to the core MindsDB code in GitHub. Everything that you're building with the, the model or the chatbot is unique to you and your organization. So what I'd suggest is um, having a, a try of MindsDB um, at uh, cloud.mindsdb.com in the demo um, environment. Um, build out your chatbot, port it across to a production environment from there, and that would be um, licensed to you. There are licensing constraints if you use an open source version, um, which is something to be aware of, so please do read the license. It's a proper open source license, but please do check it out um, just to make sure you understand the, the terms there. Um, so Olivia is also following up. There might be a question, there might not. Anybody else has any questions, we'll be wrapping up in a minute or so. So please do fire those questions in if you have them. We'll try and get to them very quickly. Otherwise, we shall say goodbye. So I can't see any further questions coming in. Um, so I should say, um, if you do have any further questions, if anything comes to mind um, after this, uh, this call, uh, you will get a recording of the session that will hit your inbox in the next 24 hours, something like that. Um, if you have any further questions, as Martin said before, please do um, ask us on Slack. That's the best place to access um, brains like Martinez and the rest of the engineering team um, and the yeah, core MindsDB contributors as well. So I'm um, looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Um, and I wish you a good rest of the day wherever you are. Thank you. Bye Thank bye. you very much. Bye.